am that British guy and welcome back to my playthrough of Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. Now we are nearing the end of this game, uh, we should only have really two more episodes, this one and then the finale wrapping everything up. So with that in mind um, I'm looking to the next game in uh, the retro playthrough series. So what I plan on doing is throwing it out to you guys, I've got three games in mind um, and really just kind of shout you out and see if there is any preference. Please hit me up in the comments or on Twitter at Rightly Wrongly or you can find me on Facebook, that British guy 86 The three games in question are these ones and as you can see they are all PlayStation 1 games, uh, they are all driving type games. We have Micro Machines V3, we have Formula 197 and we have Gran Turismo, the very first one. So yes, please let me know which one of those you have a particular preference to and I will play through that one next. But for now we've still got to finish off Metal Gear 2 so let's jump right back in. Cool. It's me, your number one fan. Snake, watch yourself. You've got company, Night Fright, the last surviving member of the Whispers. You know, the legendary gorilla unit. Yeah, that one I've been fighting for the entire game, that one. Night Fright? He's wearing a state-of-the-art camouflage suit that makes him practically invisible. Not only that, he'll attack you with a gun that's completely silent. No one has ever seen his face. You know what you have to do, right? Lucky me, I've got a fan club. Use your ears, Snake. Over and out. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Right, submachine gun. And rations. Run. Come on, come this way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Boom. It's all about the grenades. Oh, oh that worked a lot better than I thought it would. Um, Really sneaky because it doesn't actually tell you anything about this in the game. But for some bizarre reason, chocolate stops this being a problem somehow. But it uses up a ration. And luckily, I've got some. I'm not really sure how that's a thing. Okay. This is 
solid snake to come in. I'm changing my frequency. Oh, not a stupid tap code. Somebody else can help me instead then. Not even I can tell you anything about the prison. Sorry, see ya. Well, that's annoying. This is something snake coming. Wow, no one's helping me. Alright, you're sending me a stupid tap code. Oh, this is annoying. changing your frequency, you crazy idiot. Survival master, good man to know. He's also an idea man. Feel free to ask him anything. He'll help you think of a solution. His frequency is 140.38. Over and out. Oh, that man, that was painful. Just going through every single frequency until I found it. Your ability to survive depends on the limits of your mental strength. In the end, it all comes down to your will to live. Over and out. That doesn't help me anymore. If you need to know anything about mercenaries or uh, enemy weapons, ask our military, the mercenary expert, George Kasler. He knows everything. He used to work for us as a military advisor. You can trust him. He's 140.93. We'll pick up the tab for the info. Don't, just don't ask him about whale cuisine. Okay. Is it 9 2, did he say? 3? 9 something. Just gonna do all the 9s until I find them. Hello, 9 thing. I can't believe I forgot the number that quickly. <laughs> Oh wow, I've got such a bad memory. Why is it not... Wow. Oh, tell me what Kazla's number is again. Please. No. No. Give me Kazla's number. Please give me Kazlan's number! Ah. 93, 140.93, right. 140.93, I swear I put that in. This is something snake coming. How? What? 
you just told me to call him and he's not there. That's insane. Why would you do that? What is wrong with this? That's mad. Is it because I'm underground? See, this game is so lucky that I know what I need to do next in order to get in there. Because it hasn't actually told me. For whatever reason, it hasn't told me what to do. Which is weird, because I know what is required. I need the 9 key. And in order to get that 9 key, I need to go back to where the guy in the jungle was. That's insane that it hasn't actually told me any of this. Will you talk to me now? No. So you're absolutely pointless as a person. Insane. Absolutely insane. There's no logic to that whatsoever. That's so stupid. If I want to go all the way back, which I really don't, I can get the um, green card, I suppose it is, or it might be yellow colour, which combines 7, 8 and 9, but I really don't need to, because about the only door that you need to open with the 9 card... very very last door. There's not really anything else to discover with the nine card, so I'm gonna not really bother. <clears throat> Somewhere here. Aha! Picked up a nine, no damn it. What a nine card. Hello? Stupidly, isn't there beforehand, so it does actually make you backtrack, which is a real pain. But there we go. Early game design, I suppose. And to be honest, it's not like Metal Gear Solid doesn't make you do that anyway. Gear Solid 2 does, to be honest. That's that's quite bad for it. I mean, you're constantly just walking round and round in circles. Oh, go away. You're, yeah, you're constantly walking round and round in circles in um, Shell 1. So, it's, it's essentially the same sort of design, really. It's just a bit more linear. Oh, stupid impatience. 
functions. Apologies. See, this is what happens with backtracking. I get impatient and try and rush through things, which in turn makes things actually longer than they should be. Joking, I just shot you in the head. <sighs> no logic to that at all. Just Are there? This is insane. There's no more guys can arrive. And if they do, that's just dumb. How did you get here? Go away, everyone. Jungle Evil. Don't you mean Card 8? He only had Card 8. No, he was in charge of Cards 8 and 9. He must have dropped it somewhere. Check the area he was in. The card should be there. Keep up the good work. Now you tell me. So you tell me after I've got the card. That makes no sense whatsoever. There wasn't an alert or anything, so why did you not open in the first place? That's insane. Snake, you're too late. He's already passed away. His heart couldn't take it anymore. No. Wait, what's that bruise on his neck? Not to worry, Snake. Marv may be dead, but the plans for Oilix are safe. Marv was a very careful man. He left behind a copy of the plans in case of emergency. He had a reputation as a video game enthusiast. He even used to have them shipped to him from the West every month. A few days ago, he hit some microfilm in the circuit board of one of his game cartridges. It was an MSX cartridge, made by a Japanese country called Konami. You're advertising yourself in one of your own games, really? MSX? That's the world's best-selling brand of computer, isn't it? No. No, it really isn't. <laughs> then, he hid the cartridge inside that locker. Where's the key? I don't know. I couldn't get it out of him. I mean, he never told me. Sounds suspicious! A oh, cool. Snake, you're in danger! Holly, what's wrong? Snake, it's Madnar! I thought there was something strange about him, so I had the agency check him out. After he was rescued from out of heaven, apparently things didn't go well for him. His radical theories were rejected in the West. He was dismissed as a madman and shut out from the scientific community. And as time went on, he was forgotten. Madnar wasn't exactly happy with the scientific community either. He must have been searching for some way to get back at them. That's when Zanzibar Land talked him into becoming a double agent. He used his status as a scientist to feed technological secrets from east to west, but from east and west to Zanzibar Land. And Dr. Moore's disappearance? Right, the timing is too perfect. Madnar must have given them every detail of Mars' itinerary in the US. Mednar was after oil links all along. 
That's why he wanted to go to America with Marv. Gotcha now. I'm afraid you've got me, Snake. I gave up everything to be part of your world. Even the country I was born and raised in. But your world had nothing but contempt and abuse for me. I just wanted to finish Metal Gear! It's the culmination of all my life's work in robotology. But your politicians were only interested in nonsense like SDI, NIGU, and Brain Bomb. I passed on the scientific secrets of the East and West to Zanzibar land, and in return they aided me in my efforts to improve Metal Gear. Madnor, did you kill Dr. Marv? Yes. He would not share the secret of Oilix with me. And it was I who caused Gustava's death on the bridge by contacting Fox from the sewer. You don't say, after leaving us there for about ten minutes. The bathroom break. Snake, I know Marv. No, Gustava gave you the key to the locker. Give it to me! I can't play. Right. How Snake, as good a man as he is, gets cornered and can't breathe because of Madna and can't fight out of it. And this is the easiest way of defeating him. How many blooming missiles is this going to take? Really? Yay, I got him. And I didn't use up any things. Ha 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 ha. Got you! And that is where we are going to leave it for today's episode. We have defeated Night Fright, the last of the, uh, the kind of mercenary unit for this game, aka Foxhound or Dead Cell. Um, we have discovered the secrets all about Marv and Madnar as well, and we have but two bosses left to defeat, and to be honest they are best left for the very end episode, purely because of who and what they are. So we're going to draw a line under things now and come back to them in the last episode. But until then... I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.